good morning and welcome to your Wednesday update. Today we're going to talk about Hebrews and Judaism. And one important thing, since this is going to be partially a religious topic, uh, religion means different things for different people. So if for some reason in this PowerPoint or in what I say it's something that you don't believe or don't agree with, just go with it. It'll be okay. But uh, let's go over some background of Hebrews and Judaism. Uh, most important thing uh, when we talk about early Judaism and early Hebrews, uh, they never dominate the region they live in. It's not like China, it's not like the Middle East where you've got Sumerians, or it's not like Egypt where the Egyptians are there forever and in control. The people who are known as the Hebrews, they never dominate the region they live in. They don't do it politically, they don't do it militarily, they're kind of just there. But compared to the amount of power they had physically or, or politically, they have a huge impact on the world around us. Whether you are Jewish or not, your world is shaped in one way or another by these people. Now, according to traditions, Abraham was the patriarch, the founder of the Hebrews. And our best guess is he was probably Sumerian, um, probably from the city of Ur. And for whatever reason, he decides somewhere um, between the years 1900 and 1500 to migrate to southern Syria. And also according to tradition, uh, there he is a approached by a god known as Yahweh and he makes an agreement with Yahweh to follow Yahweh's principles and what made Yahweh different from a lot of the other gods in the area is Yahweh was a god that worked on the idea of righteousness now Hebrew or yeah, the Hebrews are a group of people who were probably polytheistic before this happens, and they don't instantly become monotheistic. There is a almost like an internal struggle between be, being monotheistic and polytheistic. But Abraham, he's going to see the Hebrew people, he's going to see his people as being appointed by Yahweh to spread the message of righteousness. And the idea behind Abraham and this religion he is creating is a religion of purity and faith. And because their religion was so different than other religions in the area, the Hebrews were often separated from other people. Part of that was voluntarily because they wanted to try and keep their customs and their ideas pure, but also because outsiders didn't want to mess with them because they were so different. The Hebrews allowed people to come into their new religion and being circumcised was the way to show that you accepted the teachings of Yahweh. And over time, the Hebrews become known as the Israelites. According to tradition, uh, Israelites, their name comes from the son of Abraham, Jacob, who changes his name to Israel. All right, moving on to Moses, this is a very famous story. Uh, a lot of people have heard it. Um, sometime around 1250 BC, according to tradition, the Hebrews become slaves in the New Kingdom of Egypt. Now, historically speaking, there's no evidence of this. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means that we haven't found evidence of it up to this point. But according to tradition, Moses becomes the leader of the Israelites sometime around 1250 um, and leads them into the Sinai Desert. Uh, this is the story known as the Exodus, if you're familiar with the Christian Bible or even the, the Jewish Torah. Now, while the Israelites, while the Hebrews are roaming through the Sinai Desert, Moses receives the law of Yahweh, better known as the Covenant or the Ten Commandments. And it's here that the Hebrews are going to become a monotheistic society instead of what was called a 
mono latrine society. Uh, mono latrine might be a word you've never heard of before. It's a word that's not used very often, but what it basically means is the Hebrews prior to this, they primarily worshiped Yahweh, but they still recognized that other gods existed. But after the Ten Commandments are given to Moses, the Hebrews become a monotheistic society where they acknowledge only Yahweh and no other gods uh, sort of, uh, exist. Now the other thing about the Ten Commandments is it's also the basic ethics system of Judaism. Um, if you think about it, for the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments, they deal with the human obligations to Yahweh, but the other six are about relationships between people. You know, honor thy mother, honor thy father, don't steal. All of those are going to become the basic ethics of Judaism. Now, what are the actual basics of Judaism? Well, first of all, uh, God and nature are separate. Uh, in other religions, the gods represented nature. You saw that <clears throat> in Sumeria with um, their gods. You see that in Egypt. Uh, you see that if you go to Roman mythology, Greek mythology. <clears throat> you see that in Norse myth mythology with Vikings. But in Judaism, God and nature are completely separate. Uh, Yahweh was seen as being above and superior to nature. Another basic of Judaism, God is a moral being. Um, in other religions, gods are amoral. Just look at Zeus from Greek mythology. Um, sleeping with women all over the place and causing trouble. Um, in other religions, the gods are often capricious, meaning that they can change on a dime and, and change the way they feel. and They can go from one moment being helpful to vengeful. Well, in Judaism, they don't see Yahweh as doing that. Um, Yahweh, in Judaism, is said to care about the actions of humans, where um, gods and other religions are kind of indifferent. For Judaism, ethical behavior is required, and there's no separation between the spiritual world and the material world. The, there is an afterlife in Judaism, but it's different than the Christian afterlife. It's different than the the Islamic afterlife. And this week there is a reading about that so you can learn a little bit more. Now the holy books of Judaism. Most people know about the first one, the Torah. Uh, the Torah is also known as the Pentateuch and it has the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And when you read the Torah, it's not just a religious book. It also has the history of the Jews, or the Hebrews, if you will. It tells you about their laws, it contains their poetry, and it really tells you about the culture. If you've ever read the Old Testament and you've seen so-and-so, son of so-and-so, son of what's-his-name, that's all of their genealogy being preserved. That's their history. The Torah is just a little is a small part of what's known as the Jewish Bible, but that is the primary holy book. There is a second holy book that a lot of people don't know, and that's called the Talmud. <clears throat> the Talmud was written later, and it's the primary source of Jewish law and Jewish theology. And it's the studies, and it's the writings, and it's the teachings of the rabbi. And if you're curious what the word rabbi means, rabbi just means teacher. And the Talmud, it, it kind of breaks down to two parts. There's the Mishnah, which is the oral traditions. It's the oral teachings written down of the rabbi. And then the Gemara, which is where the rabbi have analyzed the Torah and provided their commentary. Now, one last slide here. And I guess this is a good time to do the word of the day since I'm almost done. We're going to make the word of the day, hmm, let's do something simple. Let's just do cat, C-A-T. I have a bunch of cats, so I'm going to use them. Today's word of the day is cat, C-A-T. Now, the word of the day from Monday and the word of the day of today, you'll answer those on the secret word quiz that I'll be opening up 
here as soon as I'm done with this video. But anyways, continuing on, what happens to the Israelites? Um, for the kingdom of Israel is divided into two different kingdoms. You've got the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. Uh, the kingdom of Israel is destroyed by the Assyrians in 722 BC. The Assyrians, you know, they just hacked and slashed their way across the world, basically. But the kingdom of Judah is going to exist until, I think it's 588 or 586 BC, somewhere around in there. And they're defeated by those Neo-Babylonians we talked about previously. Or the Chaldeans, if you remember their alternate name. And they're taken as slaves. Now the Neo-Babylonians, they are defeated by the Persians. And it's the Persians who are going to free the, the Jews from captivity. Now some of the Jews are spread throughout the ancient world. They end up in Greece. They end up in what will become Rome. Um, some of them go back home to, to Israel. But when they get to Israel, they find that the first temple has been destroyed and they rebuild it. All right, so that's your short whirlwind tour of Judaism. Uh, throughout the semester, we'll be talking about a couple of other religions, but that's just the uh, you know, first one of many. And that's not everything there is to know about Judaism, but it's enough to get you going. Um, if you're interested in learning more, of course, you can research on your own. Uh, one last thing this week, in addition to all your other work that you have due, is your first reflection paper. And all you have to do for your first reflection paper is take one of the online readings from um, Lesson 1, Lesson 2, Lesson 3, Lesson 4. Give your personal reflection on it. It should be about a page and a half long, double spaced. In your first paragraph, just briefly tell me, this is the article I'm writing about. This is what it's about. And for the rest of it, tell me what you think of it. You agree with the article, you disagree with the article, you think it's neat, you hate it, why, why not? The point of the reflection paper is for you to critically think and give an opinion and give your thoughts on something. Um, why? Well, number one, it'll help you understand history better. But number two, you know, analyzing and understanding the world around us is one of the basic things that we have to do. And that's what I want you to be able to do is give your opinion. Tell me why you feel that way about something and be able to give a coherent idea. All right, I hope everybody has a good weekend. I know it's only Wednesday, but some of you may not watch this until Sunday anyways. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.